In this video, we are going to use the MVVM design pattern to implement this application. This application is a record book. It stores the name and email of a user and we'll be able to add a user as well as filter a user by name. Now, I hope you can watch this video through its entirety so that you can fully understand how to implement the MVVM pattern. By the end of this video, you'll be able to implement the MVVM pattern for your own WPF projects. I'll try as much as possible to be clear and concise. So with that being said, let's go to Visual Studio and get to the coding. So what I have here in Visual Studio is a WPF project setup. And for this project, I'll be implementing it following the MVVM design pattern. The MVVM design pattern standardizes a way in which to structure an application. In this case, we are going to structure the application by splitting it into three layers, the view layer, the view model, and the models layer. So what I have here in the project are three folders, views, view model, and models. I'll be placing code in each folder depending on which layer the code belongs to. So what I have here is a simple record book application. It's going to keep track of a user's information. So that's the name, and the email of the user. All right, so let's examine what we have in the views folder. So here in the views folder, I have two views defined, main and add user view. So what we see right now is the main view. So here in the main view is a simple list view that's going to display the list of users, a button and a text box. We're going to use this text box to filter out a user by name. Now, if you notice that the style is slightly different, that's because I created styles for these controls and I placed them in the app.zamo file. So since this application is going to deal with storing users, the first step is to create a class that's going to represent a user. So to do that, I'll simply add a class to the model layer. So here in the models folder, I'm going to add a new class. I'll simply name this class user and I'll set it to a public class. The user class is going to have two properties. That's the name property and it will be of the type string, a nullable string, name, and email. So I'm going to also define a constructor for this class. All right, so there we have it. And this is the user class. Now I'm going to create another class. This class is going to help us query users as well as store users. I'm going to name this class user manager. Now, because this class is dealing with the data of the application, in this case, helping us query and save new data, I'm going to place this class inside the models folder. So right here in the models folder, I'll add a new class. And this time I'll name this class user manager. I'll set this to a public class. And this class is going to have a property. And this property will be of the type observable collection. It will simply hold collection of user objects. So I'll specify in the angle brackets the type it's going to hold, in this case, the user type. I'll simply name this database users. Now in a real world application, you might query data from the database. In this case, we do not want to query data from the database. So what I'm going to do is I'll simply hard code some users here. So I'll simply set that to a new instance of the collection. And right here, I'm going to define some users. Now for the sake of speed, I'll simply paste the users here. All right, so there we have it. So we have a bunch of users defined here and we store them 
inside this database users property. Now I'll make this property a static property. And in this class, I'm going to define two methods. The first method will be the get user method, and the second method will be add user. So simply say public. This method will be a static method, and it's going to return a collection of users. The name of the method will be get users. So what it will simply do, it will simply return the database users, which we have hard coded here. All right, now I'm also going to create the second method. So I'll simply say public, it'll also be a static method. And this method won't return anything. It's only going to add a user. So I'll simply set the return type to void. It's going to take in a single argument of the type user. And what this method will do, it will simply add this user passed in through this argument and it will add it to the collection. So database users, then simply add it to the collection. All right, so there we have it. So we have a user class and we also have a user manager which helps us query data of the user type. All right, now what we're going to do is let's go to the main view. Now here in the main view, we have a list, a text box and a button. This button will be used to add a new user. When this button is clicked, we are going to open another view and the view we are going to open is the add user view. Let's take a look at the add user view. Now the add user view is a simple window with two text boxes. This is going to allow us to provide the name and the email when adding the new user. Now here in the main view, when this button is clicked, we are not going to initiate an event. We are simply going to initiate a command or rather we are going to invoke a command. In the MVVM pattern, we try as much as possible to minimize the use of events. So we'll simply invoke a command and the command is going to direct us to the logic that we need to execute. So in this case, I'm going to create a command class that we are going to be using for this application. To do that, I'll simply go to the project and here in the project, I'm going to add a new folder. I'll name this folder commands. And within this commands folder, I'm going to add a new class. I'll name this class the relay command. So this class is going to define how the command is going to point us to the logic that we are going to execute. So what I'm going to do is I'll set this class to a public class. And this class is going to implement an interface. And that interface is called the I command interface. So now that I have this command, I'm going to implement this interface. I'll simply press Alt and enter on the keyboard then I'll select implement interface. All right, so this command class has two methods that we can see here, the can execute method and the execute method. When a command is invoked, it's going to execute these two methods, starting with the can execute method followed by the execute method. Now here, we can define some logic that we would like to be executed, but that's not the best way of doing it. So what we are going to do is we are going to implement this class in such a way that whichever class is going to use this class, that's the class that should point us to the method to invoke. So in this case, what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a constructor. And after I do that, I'm going to create two properties. 
and this property will be of the type action and this action will take in an object. I'll name this action the execute action and I'm also going to create another property. This time it will be a predicate. And this predicate will simply take in an object as well. And I'll name it the can execute predicate. Now, this action and this predicate are simply methods. And an action is a method that returns void. It simply performs an action. But this method should take in an object. And here we have a predicate. A predicate is a method that returns a boolean, but this should take in an object as an argument. Why do I create these variables? Well, because we see that the methods that are going to be invoked, one returns a boolean and one returns void, but they all take in parameters. So what I'm going to do here in the constructor is whenever a user creates an instance of this class, they should specify two methods. And when this command class is invoked, we are going to execute the code that will be defined in those two methods. So here I'm going to add an action to the constructor. And this action will be called the execute method. I'm going to add another one and this will be of the type predicate. And this will be the can execute method. All right, so there we have it. So once the user passes these two methods, and these are simply references to a method, we can then save those two methods in these two variables. So the execute will simply be equal to this execute method. And the can execute will be equal to the can execute method that will be given by the user of this class. Now these two properties will be set to private. So these two properties can only be used within this class. Now that I have the two methods that the user specifies by storing them in these two variables, what I'm going to do is I'm going to now execute these two methods. Now for me to execute these two methods, I need to place them right here in these other methods. So for the can execute method, I'll simply return whatever the user is going to return. So in this case, get the method and we simply invoke that method. Now the method should take in an object. So we are simply going to pass this parameter and this parameter comes from the command. So in the UI, when we invoke a command, we can pass an object. So here we'll simply get this parameter and pass it to the method. And that's it. Then for the execute method, we simply execute whatever method the user is going to provide. So we simply place it here and we need to pass that method an object, we simply pass it an object. All right, so that's it for this command class. Let me just do a quick recap. All right, so in our view, if we invoke a command, the command is going to execute these two methods. Now, we do not want to define any logic within these two methods. So what we do is we allow the user of this class to specify two methods and they have to pass those two methods when creating this class. So through the constructor, 
Once they pass these two methods, we can then place them within these two methods. So when the command is executed, we are simply executing the method that the user provided. And here we use an action and a predicate. Why? Because the method should return void and take in an object. We use a predicate because a predicate is a method that should return a boolean but should also take in an object. All right, so that's it for the command class. Now let's go to the main view. All right, so here we have a main view. Now for us to display data here in the UI, according to the MVVM pattern, we need to create a class that stores the data as well as binds some commands to the UI, like for this pattern in this case. Now to do that, we are going to create a class and we're going to call this class the main view model. So right here in the view model folder, I'm going to add a new class. And this class will be called the main view model. I'll set this class to a public class. Now I'm going to define some properties in this class and these properties are going to bind to the main view. So in this case, I'm going to define a collection that's going to store users and that collection is going to bind to this list view. And I'm also going to define a command. That command is going to bind to this button. All right, so let's go back to our main view model. So here I'll start with the observable collection. And this collection will be called users. It is going to store the type user. Now here we see that the class user is not resolved. The reason for that is because we defined this in our models folder here. So we need to add this namespace and we can simply do that by adding a using statement. Simply say record book, then models. All right, so there we have it. Now the second property I'm going to add to this class is a command property. And I'll simply say this will be of the type I command. And I'll simply name this command show window command. So this is going to show a pop-up window that we are going to use to add our new command. All right, so there we have it. Now, these are simply variables. They do not have any data associated to them. So I'm going to create a constructor. And within this constructor, I'm going to assign some data to this. So here, for the users, I'll simply say user users is equal to the user manager class. So we are going to use the user manager class and we are going to use the get user methods. So this method is going to return a collection of users and store them to this property here. For the command, we are now going to assign this command to a new instance. So we are simply going to say command is equal to new relay command. Now remember that when creating a relay command, we need to specify two methods. And once this command is invoked, we are going to execute the logic in those two methods. So the first method will be the show window method. And the second will be can show window. All right. Now, at the moment, we do not have these methods defined here. So what I'll simply do, with the help of Visual Studio, I'm going to generate these two methods. 
So I'll simply press Alt Enter. I'll generate this method. Then I'll generate this method as well. All right. Now notice we have two method. One returns a boolean. So here we are always going to return true. This method will be executed first and this is going to determine on whether the command should continue invoking or not. So in this case, we want to continue invoking the command. So we just return true. In some cases, you might want to implement where you would return false. But in this case, we always want to return true. So we'll leave it to that. Now here in the show window, we are going to add our logic. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'll simply create an add user view. So I'll simply say add user. Now remember we have a view here called add user. So I'll simply create a new instance. So say add user, say add user window is equal to a new instance. Now, once I have this user, I'm now going to display this user window. So I'll simply say show. All right, so there we have it. So we have two properties, users and the command. When this command is invoked, it's going to execute these two methods. And all this is defined in the main view model. Now let's go to the main view. Now here in the main view, we need to bind an instance of the main view model. To do that, we need to go to the code behind of this main view. All right, so here in the code behind, in the constructor of this view, I'm going to create a new instance of the main view model. This class contains the data that we need to bind to the view. So I'll simply say main view model is equal to a new instance of the main view model class. All right, now that I have this instance, I now need to bind it to the view. Now to make the data available in the view, I need to set the data context of this view to this instance. So I'll simply say this, then I'll say data context, then I'll set it to this instance. So what this does is it sets the default object for data binding to this main view model. So here we can now go to the view and here in the view, for instance, we have the list view here. I'll simply say item, item source, then I'll simply set a binding and I'll simply bind this to the user's collection. Now the question is, where is this data coming from? Well, right here in the code behind, we set it to the main view model. So the data is actually coming from this object here. And here in the view, all we need to do is just specify the property that we want to bind this to. All right, for the button, I'll simply set the command to a binding. So I'll simply bind this to the show window command, show window command. All right. Now remember that these two properties were defined in the main view model, right? Right here, users and show window command. So once we create that binding, we can now bind to those two properties. All right, so let's go ahead and test the application. All right, so the application is up and running and here we can see that our list view is showing a bunch of users, but here we can't see the name and the email. We're going to fix that in a moment. Now here we have a button and we bound this button to a command and that command simply invokes some logic. So in this case, if we click this button, we should be able to see a pop-up window. And there we have it. So we have this window showing up here. 
So I'll simply close this and I'll fix this binding here. Now here in the list view, we have a grid view defined and we have two columns here. We have the name and email column. So we need to specify here to say we want to display the name and to do that, we'll simply set the display member binding. We'll set that to a binding and we'll simply bind it to the name property. We'll do the same for the other column. And this time we'll bind it to the email. All right, so let's go ahead and run the application. All right, now here we can see the list of views as displayed and we can see the name and the email. Now, if we click this button here, we invoke the command, but if we try to change the name here and add an email address here, if we click this, nothing is going to happen. The reason why is because we haven't yet defined a view model for this view. The view model has to bind some data here as well as run some logic. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'll simply close this, close this. So if we look at the add user view, we see that we would like to bind two properties, name, email, and also have a command for this button. So I'll go to the view model folder and I'm going to add a new class. In this case, I'm going to name it add user view model. All right, so there we have it. And I'll set this to a public class. And I'm going to add two properties. The first will be name. And the second one will be email. Now I'm also going to add another property, which will be of the type I command. And this one will be the add user command. All right, so there we have it. Now, I'm also going to define a constructor for this class. Now, we do not have the namespace for this command, so I'll simply add that namespace. So I'll simply say system windows input. Now this command will be set to the relay command. So I'll simply say add user command is equal to a new instance of the relay command. And we need to specify two methods. So in this case, the first method will be the add user method. And the second one will be the can add user. So with the help of Visual Studio, I'll generate these two methods. So I'll simply say Alt Enter, then I'll generate. I'll do the same for this method. Now the can add user should always return true. And here for the add user, we are going to add some logic that's going to add a user to our collection. So in this case, I'll simply say user manager then I'll simply call the add user method. The add user method will simply add a new instance of a user. Now the name of the user and the email of the user will be specified according to what we are going to type in the text box. Now we are going to be binding the text boxes text property to these two properties here. So I'll simply get this property and set the name of this user 
to whatever property we are going to type in there. I'll do the same for the email. So email is equal to email. All right, so there we have it. So when the button is clicked, we simply ask the user manager to add a new user. Then we specify the new user based on the name and the email. So there we have it. This is our add user view model. So let's go to the add user here. So here in the view, we are going to bind these two properties, which is the text property. So we'll simply say text property is equal to a binding. And we're going to bind this to the name. And for this property here, we'll simply bind it to the email. All right, for the button, we'll simply set the command to a binding. And we are going to bind it to the add user command. All right, so we have bound this to the view, but this data is not yet available to the view. Why? Because we haven't yet set the data context. So the view doesn't know where to get the name, email, and this command. To do that, we need to go to this views code behind. So here in the views code behind, in the constructor, I'm going to create a new instance of the add user view model class. I'll simply say add user view model is equal to a new instance of this class. Once I have an instance of this object, I'll set the views data context. So I'll say this, then data context is equal to this very object. All right, so there we have it. So we can go ahead and run the code. All right, so here I'll simply add a user and I'm going to add a name, Jamie. Then I'll say Jamie at one, two, three. Then I'll say add. And here we can see a user has been added. I can continue to add and we still see the user being added. If I change this to another name like Mike, all right. So there you have it. Now, at this point, I'm going to implement this text box filter property. So we should be able to filter the list by name. So I'll simply close this and I'll go to the main view. All right. So for this feature, I'm going to use an event handler. So what I'm going to do is I'll simply set a text changed event handler on the text box. So here, we have the text box and we give it a name filter text box. So I'll simply say text changed event. Then I'll set it to a new event handler. All right. Now let's go to the code behind of this main view. All right. So here we can see we have an event handler and this event will be raised every time the text in that text box is changed. Now, if we go back to the main view, we can see that we named this list view. We give it a name and we give it a name user list. Now we can actually access the items of this list and filter the items. So to do that right here in the code behind, I'm going to access the user list. So I'll simply say user list, then I'll get the items. And this items property is of the type item collections. So this item collection property allows us to apply a filter method. So I can simply say filter. And the method that we specify here is going to determine on whether a user should be part of the list or not. So in this case, I'll simply name this method filter method. Now, we do not have this method 
defined yet. So with the help of Visual Studio, I'm going to generate this method. So I'll simply select this, then Alt Enter, and I'll generate the method. Now notice that this method returns a boolean. So if it returns true, it means that object should be part of the filtered list. If it returns false, it shouldn't be part of that list. All right, so what we're going to do is we are going to simply get every user inside the list. And the user is passed through this argument here. So this, what I'm going to do is I'll simply say user I'll simply say variable user is equal to this object, then we can cast it to a user type. So I'll simply say as user. Now there are different types of casting. You can actually cast it by simply using parentheses. So I can simply do this then say user. That's also a form of casting and this would do right. So now that I have this user, what I'll simply do is I'll get this user and I'll check if the user's name, so I'll simply say name, if the user's name contains a specific text. So where do we get this text from? Well, right here from this text box. And we gave this text box a name, we said filter text box. So I'll simply go back here and I'll simply say, take the text from the filter text box. Now, there's another feature that I would like to add, and that is I do not want it to be case sensitive. So if the name has an uppercase letter, it shouldn't recognize the uppercase later or if it has a lowercase later it shouldn't recognize so i can add another argument to this contains method and that is the string comparison argument so here i'll simply select the enum which is the ordinal ignore case so this is going to ignore on whether the letter is uppercase or lowercase all right now this contains method is always going to return true or false. Now here we need to specify the property we are getting from the filters text box. In this case it's the text property. All right now this method as I said returns a boolean either true or false. So if the name contains a certain text it's going to return true if not false. Now we can actually return that same boolean to this filter method. So I'll simply say return whatever answer is coming from there. So this way, if this user object has a name that contains the text, then that should be part of the filtered list. So that's it. Now let's go ahead and run the application. All right, so the application is up and running. So I'll start by adding a new user. So I'll simply say, Jamie and Jamie at one, two, three. All right, so we have the user added to the list. Now here, I'm now going to perform a filter. So I'll simply say J, and there you can see the two names. So if I say A, then we only have Jamie. And it doesn't mind on whether I use lowercase or uppercase letters. All right, so there we have it. Now when adding the user, you notice that this window pops up right here on the left side. I would like this window to pop up at the center and should be the child of this main window. So we can actually achieve that. So to achieve that, we need to go to the logic of this main window. And to do that, we need to go to the view model of the main view. So let's go. Now here, this is the logic that creates the new window. So I would like to make this window that we created a child of the main view. So I can simply set the owner property. So I simply say owner. Then I can set it to the main view. Now here we do not have access to that main view object 
or the main view. So how do we set this owner property to the main view? Well, we can now use this parameter. So when invoking a command, you can actually pass an object through the command parameter. Let's go to the main view. Now here in the main view, if we have a look at our button here, we can add another property called command parameter. So this object will be passed to the logic that will be executing the command. In this case, I would like to actually pass this very view here as the object. Now, this window here was given a name called main window. So I'll simply get this name, I'll copy. Now here, what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to pass a reference. So I'll say a reference, then I'll specify the name. And in this case, I'm going to specify this very view, which is our main view. So that's it. Now here in the logic, let's go back. Now here in the logic, I can access that window by getting this object. So I'll simply say var main window is equal to this object. Then we are going to cast it as a window. So I'll simply say as window. All right. Now that we have our main window, we can now set it as the owner of this add user window. Then the other property that I'm going to set on this add user window is the startup location. So I'll simply say startup location. Then I'll simply set it to the center of the owner. So this window always start up at the center of its owner. All right, so let's go ahead and run the application. So the application is up and running. So regardless of where we place this window, if I click this, we should see another window pop up here at the center. All right, so there you have it. So this little window is now a child of the main window just by simply setting its property right here. All right, so there we have it. That's an MVVM pattern implemented on a WPF application. Now let's have a quick recap. So MVVM allows us to separate an application into three layers, view, view models, and models. This way we can actually separate the concerns of the application. So this means the views only deal with the appearance of the windows. The view models deal with storing the data and executing the logic, and the models deal with the application's data. In this case, requesting data from the database as well as defining the classes or the entities used in this application. So if the application has got a problem, maybe we are trying to fix a bug, we know exactly where to fix. Why? Because it's easy to navigate through this type of project structure. If the user needs to add a new property, I'll simply open the user class and add a new property. If the command has a problem, we simply open this command and fix that problem. All right. So there you have it. Thanks for watching this video. Remember to subscribe to this channel if you find this content useful. I'll see you in the next one.